Welcome to MCOM Solutions, Jake here. So recent disasters have highlighted the fragile nature of our centralized communications infrastructure in the United States. Moreover, these events have also emphasized the crucial role that MCOM or emergency communications plays in disaster preparedness. If you just look at any of the accounts from North Carolina, you'll see that Many, many people, and probably in those first few days, upwards to 90% of the people received the only way they were able to communicate was through somebody, whether it was them or a neighbor or so on and so forth, that had some sort of amateur radio. And they were using a local repeater, the Mount Mitchell repeater. It's been talked about a lot on YouTube, so if you're interested in some of those stories, I definitely encourage you to go check it out. So... Through that first phase, you know, the initial impact of the hurricane hitting that area and causing massive devastation, cutting off roads, killing internet service, killing cellular service, people resorted back to what a lot of people always do in emergency communication situations is radios, right? However, you fast forward a little bit after the first, after the smoke cleared, donated Starlink systems, whether they're through private donators or through Starlink, I'm not 100% on all those. I haven't researched that to a finite, but systems started showing up. And as those systems got deployed to certain areas, they initially went to like areas where they were consolidating rescue personnel and supplies so that those people could reach out back to higher headquarters and so on and so forth. And then they started getting pushed out to the more rural communities that were fully cut off, whether it was being transported on helicopters or via ATVs or UTVs. However, people were getting them there, they were getting them there. And then people were able to get those up if they had any sort of emergency power supply. And we'll talk that a little bit here in a second is now they were able to use their cell phones and Wi-Fi calling or just messenger apps or, you know, WhatsApp, Signal, whatever you use. And now they were able to communicate with people and get assistance or update family members, do all that good things that we want to do, especially post disaster. So we're going to explore, and obviously you told by the title and everything I've said here, that we're going to explore whether or not Starlink should be considered an MCOM tool, something that you should consider adding to your MCOM toolbox. So backstory with me and Starlink is back, I think three years ago, I'll correct myself if I'm wrong. <laughs> I got signed up on the initial beta test list or yeah, beta test wait list there in Washington state was one of the areas that was on the list of uh, eligible areas to sign up. Fortunately, unfortunately, I did not get it during that process, but then I did get uh, it purchased off the kind of initial production list, wait list. Uh, so caveat, I'm not a Starlink fanboy. Where we live in Washington State, my residence in Washington State is does not have any other internet service providers that are considered high speed, at least in my opinion. Uh, I know some will argue some others, but we'll, I'll give you a little rundown of what we tried over the years before we were able to get Starlink. We tried Exceed, which now is Viasat, um, we tried HughesNet, the uh, Gen 2 or Gen 5, I guess it was, which was okay in the beginning. And as people started signing up for it, it got worse and worse as far as speeds and then it's data limited. And I live in a large household and then a, my wife also works partially from home. So having lack of data, so we were we were doing all kinds of things to try to be able to get get things done and obviously a little bit of entertainment of course and then we also tried cellular internet service providers like the third party ones which were okay but um also data limited even though they claim they're not they throttle you so as i mentioned there's or as as i've mentioned before i guess there's layers to emergency communications. Is Starlink the ultimate solution to your, you just go out and buy a Starlink system and 
all your emergency communication problems are solved. No, no, at least as far as I'm concerned, no. <clears throat> you, it is going to be your initial area. What is the best case for somebody if you're already in a situation where you're looking to upgrade your system because you live in one of those areas where you can't get, you know, fiber or, you know, broadband internet at your home and you're tired of dealing with data limits and slow internet speeds and uh, lag time and all that other stuff, then maybe Starlink could come into your come into your budget and now you have a system that you can also use potentially if you set it up correctly in an emergency. And then we'll talk the future of Starlink's newest system and how that makes it even more of a tool that could be used on the road. So, all right, so the first way I set my system up is we added a uh, un uninterruptible power supply, which is a UPS. You can get them off Amazon anywhere. They, they're basically a box that has a little battery and then they're also a surge protector because you know you should surge protect your um, expensive components like that. Plug it in, when the power kicks off, it takes over. Depending on what mode my Starlink system at the time was running in, about 30 to 40 minutes of runtime after the power went out. Most of my power outages on average in that area were around that, except for one maybe we had a winter storm. Uh, and in that case, I also have an EcoFlow River Pro that I can just hand carry over there, set it up, plug it in, plug in the TV, flip on Netflix, and everyone's happy, right? Um, or I also have a backup generator. So layers to my backup power is also suggested. There's a solution for you. Now, can you move the traditional Starlink system? Yes, plenty of people have been for years. Your RVers, your uh, digital nomads, plenty of people have had the regular Starlink system. Some people have even modified the Gen 2 discs, the rectangle one, to um, adapt to like a plate on their vehicle so that they didn't have to deal with the, dealing with the, the tripod all the time. So there is some limits like with, because uh, they're low earth, low earth satellites, you have, uh, have to have a northerly exposure. If you live in a valley somewhere and that's blocked, it potentially might not work for you or you're gonna have to put it on a really tall pole to get it to work at your residence or like maybe a radio antenna tower. <laughs> so, uh, so. The next system we'll talk here in a second. I'm going to do one little caveat here just to talk Starlink. So about five weeks ago ish, our system went down. Wife called me, said, Hey, internet's not working. So I'm trying to diagnose it on my end. Cause I'm over here overseas right now and couldn't figure out what's wrong with it. Ultimately ended up, you know, walked her through a few like reset options and so on and so forth. None of that worked. Um, open a help ticket with Starlink, which I was worried because I'd, I'd heard stories from like the Facebook groups I've followed over the years about Starlink that dealing with customer service was awful. And maybe they've improved that over the years. But this is the first time I've ever had to contact them. And yeah, I initially had to go through the like chat bot thing and asking me the same questions I'd already answered. And like, yes, I've already done this. I've already done that. And I could tell as the moment I got a human, uh, they're like, hey, we ran a system diagnostic on your system. You need to replace it. And we're sending a new system. Uh, however, because of the high demand, because of the hurricanes, um, you may be delayed. I was like, oh, boy. You know, so once again, like I said, my wife does a lot of her work from home. So she can work off satellite or off her uh, cell phone, but it's a pain. So a lot easier just to, you know, be able to use the Starlink. So <clears throat> anyways, they sent me a full new system free of charge. And it actually arrived really quick. So I don't know. For me, my experience has been great. <laughs> That's all I got to say. All right. So moving on. What is the next level, right? Yes, you can move the normal system. Like I said, people have done it. But it's painful. We, it's kind of bulky. And it draws a lot of power. All right. So let's take a look at their latest system. So jumped over to Starlink.com. We're going to check out the mini here, which... This thing I think is a game changer for emergency communications, whether you're an individual, 
uh, a team of people, a community of people, uh, NGO, volunteer, whatever, governmental agency, this thing could really change the ability to communicate in remote areas or areas that are affected by disaster where communication systems have been disrupted. So they talk about application, how it can be carried on backpack, high speed, low latency, internet to go or on the go. So what's in the box, you got the dish here. The dish itself is that rectangle part. It has the integrated router in it. You got a stand, you got a pipe adapter, you've got their 50 foot or 14 meter cable, a power supply for wall power if needed, and the Starlink plug. This right here, is what I really want to talk is the specs and highlight a few of these specs. Weight, 14.8 pounds or 6.7 kilograms. Another key factor is IP67 rating. That's ingress protection. Basically, layman's terms, it's waterproof so that it can be out in the elements and you don't have to worry about it. It's rated up to 60 miles an hour plus of wind. It Average power consumption is 40, 20 to 45 watts, which is huge for that off-grid communications or semi-off-grid. Um, I know someone will argue about that because the way Starlink works, but you're off-grid somewhere and you're using this to communicate outside of that area. So that's what I'm saying. And then some other information, right? You've got, um, oh, and they've got a 12-foot short Starlink cable coming soon to their shop. So some you don't have to buy an aftermarket one. Like to you just plug it into your car or whatever. So right, that's pretty much it for this. Let's look at how we make this thing portable. Right here over on Amazon, you check out, I just did a quick search. There's a Starlink mini battery adapter for DeWalt batteries. I only picked that because I have DeWalt batteries. <clears throat> and this thing clips on to the dish, right? Let's check it out. Um, Right there, you take your DeWalt batteries you already have, or they have ones for like Makita batteries and other batteries out there, and you can use that to power it. So very, very cool. They're about $100 for the adapter, almost $600, I think, right, $599 or whatever for the system. So it is not a cheap buy. Yeah, so budget-wise, that is probably not in a lot of people's budgets, but if it is, it could definitely be a force multiplier for your emergency communications plan. So I would consider it, I am considering getting an additional one once I get back to the United States for portable operations. Uh, so I hope you found this useful. If you did, subscribe to the channel, hit that thumbs up, check out our website and our other social media links down below. Any other affiliate links, your support is appreciated. Oh, and I also signed up for Buy Me A Coffee. So if you just wanna give me a quick little Buy Me A Coffee for this video, I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching.